All right, welcome to the Casey Catch Up. We're over here in Maui, and Kai's invited us around to do an in-person podcast. So, Kai, first of all, thanks for having us. And, Stoked uh, to be on, yeah, finally. Yeah, we finally made it happen. So, we was explaining it before, but basically, this podcast is all about downwind foiling, and you kind of invented downwind foiling. Ola Kai back in 2016? It was 2016. Yeah. yeah, I remember I was here and did the race and I was like all stoked and then you dropped the clip and we were like, we're doing the wrong sport. Yeah. You know? And we, you know, your clip. So do you want to talk to us about um, like how that eventuated, how many hours you spent getting to the point where you were confident releasing a video like that and something, and maybe talk a little bit how on the progression of like looking back at it now, the board you were riding then. Yeah. It's actually more similar to what we're writing now than it's what we ironic. Were four years ago. It's so weird. I never thought it'd go that direction. Yeah. But I mean backstory is like I've been hydrofoiling on the aluminum mm -hmm. foils, the with the snowboard boots, you know, Dave Kalama, Laird Hamilton, Rush Randall, those guys like they were doing it since I think like early like two thousand or nineteen ninety nine or something. And yeah. I got my first foil when I was like nine years old. So it must have been like around 2002 or something. And, uh, you know, for me, it was like, I always loved doing it, but it was such like this niche thing. Mm -hmm. And doing stand-up paddle races back then, we had it like so many and there was like three world tours. And, yeah. um, and I always like wanted to, I always thought you could foil downwind, but I wasn't at the, I didn't have the mental capacity or the understanding like, Oh, well, if you just made a carbon version and you made a bigger wing, you'd have more lift. But because I was just, a, you know, pretty young still, just yeah. surfing, foiling, stand up, whatever. Plenty and, of other things taking your attention. Well, I just didn't like, I, I, I could, uh, we did, I did go downwind probably like for years before when we'd tow foil somewhere and it would yeah. get windy here because it's windy here all the time. Yeah. And I would let go and I would try to glide as far as I could on swells. And I'm like, gosh, I think you could do it. Mm. And at the time I, I eventually, Rush Randall had the first carbon foil, but the thing was so flexy because it wasn't like now where everything is like, it was probably wet laid up. It was like, you know, it, there was the it, kite foiling hadn't revolutionized the carbon foils yet. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as kite foils kind of um, got really good or decently good, they mm -hmm. got stiff, I ended up putting one of those foils on my sup and going out here. And it felt like I was gonna kill myself because it was so unstable. Those foils yeah. were insanely unstable. Yeah. Unrideable if you didn't have a kite. Yeah. But so then it was like, oh, okay. like. And at the time, the only person I knew that could make custom hydrofoils was Alex Aguera, yep. GoFoil. And this was even before they were called GoFoil, they were called just Alex Aguera foils, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I hit him up and I'm like, oh, I, I'm, he gave me the foil to try, it was a kite foil. And I was like, oh, I need something that's like more lift. Like I'm, I'm just sinking and then a shorter mass. And I kept giving him all these kind of like feedback and he's like, okay, okay. And then I ended up going to France for a subcomp the wave riding at La Torre. Yeah, yeah. And it was, I think that was 2000, maybe it was 15 or 14 or something. Yeah, yeah. Came back and then I realized that he had a new foil to try. And I tried it out here and it was the most groundbreaking feeling ever because I had my sub and I got on like a two foot wave and I could just like surf the unsurfable. Yeah. And ride what the foil, because everyone was making the foils for big wave surfing. Of course, yeah. And and that's when I was like, wait, instead of riding the biggest waves in the world, why can't we ride the smallest? So to bring it all around, this is all the backstory on it. I eventually was like doing all the stand-up races and I could never go faster than 14 miles an hour. You could never go faster than that like top end. Yeah. And your average speed was like nine and a half miles per hour. That was like good yeah, yeah. for a 14. Oh, for sure. And I was like, okay, like, this is, this is like, like this you is, plateaued kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm like, gosh, I want to go faster. Cause yeah. I was like watching a lot of formula one and MotoGP. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want to go faster. Every other sport I do is so much faster. Yeah. And then that's when I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been waiting for. So I threw, and at the time we were keeping it super down low cause mm. We, I didn't, we, we knew we had something, yeah, but didn't I, have, yeah. I knew there was something there, but I had to explore what it was. And, and then I, we got one of my 12 foot six boards 
we put a title box in it and put it kind of like maybe a third from the tail forward towards the nose, like, you know, yeah. pretty far forward. And I couldn't get it on flow because the mass was so short and yeah. because the tail would drag. Gotcha. Bring it down. So I was like, let's chop the tail up, turn it into a 10 four. And then I got it up and it was like, boom. Oh my gosh. How, how wide was that 10 four? It was 24 inches wide. Okay, so I'm just curious because it's like we're not that far off 10 foot boards now. Like, you know, yeah. Dave was using what, like a 9.6 or something? Dave Kalama? As, yeah, on yeah. The weekend? Totally. Well, so then it was like, it, immediately I was like, we got to film this because I got, I tried it in the harbor essentially on a nuking day yeah. and no one was around. Back then, no one would go to the harbor because there was nothing to do at the harbor except launch a jet ski. Like, there was yeah. never anyone down there. Yeah. So we went down, I, I, I was like, we could do this. And I called up Jace, a water cinematographer here. And we got the jet ski and I'm like, I just want to like capture the first moments, you know? Mm. And that video was the first moments yeah. of like actually gotcha. like successfully doing it. And yeah. Those foils were so inefficient and slow and, but it was the first of its kind yeah. and it had the lift. So I could go like a hundred yards. Yeah like successfully and you'd pump and your legs would just feel like they're gonna blow out and yeah. once i started figuring out the glides were different than sup because it was way quicker yeah then after like two or three that by the end of that run i was going like maybe a mile or two yeah but not but it was so easy to get on foil again because you had a 10 foot four board that yeah, was yeah. 24 inches wide and it would just immediately just hover out of the water yeah but yeah. it was hard to keep up because the foil couldn't manage that long board yeah and, and then the board is probably harder to maneuver being wider than what it is and longer than what it is yeah. we're using now but the kai foil also wasn't like it was low aspect like it was oh, yeah like, and it had this much like yeah. <laughs> anhedral and yeah it was like slow so you couldn't keep up with all the bumps yeah but that was kind of what made it fun too because if you got going on a big swell you felt like you're on the edge like mm. oh, holding on and yeah but then it was like, then I went back to, I was like, well, if I can, you know, ride these little swells, why can't I paddle in on a surfboard with it? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, and that was the next phase was putting it onto like a prone surfboard. And then which was, was like, the, the Fiji clip. Yeah, it was like five, six. And I went to yeah. Fiji right after. Yeah. And I mean, the epiphany happened on the South Shore. Mm -hmm. I all of a sudden just found all these waves that I was like, oh my God, like mm -hmm. you, yeah, could ride, you could and, ride all yeah. these waves that no one ever was at. And then went to Fiji, and then when I came back, I was like, okay, the board can be way smaller, and I started going downwind on just the prone board. Yeah. Then I put it on, we put the SUP foil onto like, I think it was, might have been a 7.0 by 23, yeah. and like three and a half inch thick. Mm -hmm. And that's what I started doing downwinders on. Yeah. Because I could get it up, but it was still on the Kai foil, so it was yeah. like kind of like slow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was working, and it was way easier to maintain, and. I don't know, it's just like... So, a, a lot of people that listen to this podcast are like people that are learning to downwind fall, so they love to hear stories of people struggling, because uh -huh. they, they've all struggled, or we've all struggled. Um, how many sessions did you have that was like, like slogging it out, or you just straight into it, and you were... I kind of, I already knew how to foil yeah. for many years, mm -hmm. so I understood how to foil, um, and up till then, whatever I was using was like, you know, had almost no lift, like... Like I always, you know, it was, it was basically, I already knew how to do it, Yeah. but it was like discovering a new way of doing it. Yeah. And you already knew how to downwind too. So I already like knew the, the, the lines. bumps yeah. and I already had like excellent fitness from stand up paddle mm. racing every weekend. Mm. So there was like, the only thing that was the hardest part about it was convincing other people to do it. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, cause at first I thought it was one of those things when I did it and I entered the second day of Olukai and I did it when everyone was canoe paddling. Yeah. I thought everyone would have seen it and been like, oh my gosh, let's do it. And yeah. it, it was weird. Cause like no one was like that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they were stunned by it or what, or they thought it was like this maybe gimmicky niche thing. Yeah. But I was like, okay. And then Connor and Zane picked it up mm -hmm. cause they went to, um, they went to, Alex and asked for a foil yeah. and they got a foil and then you know at the time I remember seeing Dave longboard stuff on the South Shore and I was like he's the godfather of modern surf foiling mm -hmm. and I was like this is I could just imagine this is your thing yeah and it's ironic because 
is of course he had such a big impact early days and then it went full circle with his influence now and downwind yeah yeah and I, it was like i was really stoked that he got into it um i don't think it took much convincing yeah but I just remember thinking, if he's so... Because he was, I think, one of the best at flying. He'd already do flips. He could do aerials with the boots and everything. And I was like, as soon as Dave's into this, things are going to, like, progress. Right. Yeah. And he's so good at testing equipment. Mm -hmm. So it was like... I thought for the longest time I was going to be the only one that did it. And yeah. at the same time, I was like, fine. Because whatever. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to do fun. this. Like, yeah, it's yeah. so sick. And then... It was only till like this year there's like 70 people Ooh. doing it you know yeah. like here in the races yeah that's how how proud must you have been like paddling out i was, I was paddling out with you and we're talking about flat water foiling but um f for you to have basically reinvented the sport of downwind foil, or inventing downwind foiling essentially yeah. um to be at the start line and there's like 40 guys on the sap and there's another 40 doing the, the wing you must have been pretty proud. Well, there was this little time period where SUP was on the way down. Mm. And it, back then you used to see like groups of people going doing downwinders. And yeah. it's you, the small things you miss the most. And it was like just looking out here in front of my house and seeing people going downwind. And then for five, six summers, you know, it was like quiet out there. Yeah. There's no one downwinding. Yeah. And it was just, it felt empty mm. a little bit. And then we would do the races. and. The first time I tried doing the Molokai to Oahu, they didn't allow let me mm -hmm. do it. It was it was actually that year, 2016. I ended up doing it on the um, Unlimited after all. Yeah. I think that was the year I won it, maybe, yeah, on the I think, Unlimited. I think so. But I had it, and I was like, please, can I do it? I just want a time. Yeah. And, and I was curious, too, like yeah, how yeah. it would go out there. Because yeah. those were big enough swells they could carry that big board in slower foil and For whatever. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so... It was like, then we did 20 minutes. Actually, I remember, days. I remember saying the foiling was helping your fitness, which I'm sure you didn't need any more fitness. <laughs> well, back but, then, it yeah. was like, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack after every downwinder yeah. because on my watch, my average heart rate was like 195. Oh. And I was like doing 210 because... That's, that's what the people want to hear. You're working hard. Yeah. <laughs> I was, well, because the thing was so draggy that in order to get it going really, to keep it up, you had to pump so hard mm. and you're just like... Like it just made my physical fitness insane, yeah. and I got used to it. Yeah. The back leg felt horrible, yeah. and then, yeah. then obviously the foils evolved, and now it's they're so balanced. Both your legs kind of work mm -hmm. pretty evenly, and sure. your heart rate doesn't go over one sixty five, maybe. Yeah. But um, yeah. So this year at M two M, and I'm excited for M two L. It felt like the good old sup days Dude. where there was so many people going oh. out. I was like. Frick, this is awesome. And buzz. Yeah. The best part of the foil though for the downwind racing is back then or you know like if somebody's on a sup board and they get like a hundred two hundred yard gap you need like three miles to reel them in yeah if they're good you yeah. know because you have to like be putting like a half a mile an hour or a mile an hour on them just to because yeah. there's no way you're doing twice as, you're not going up and over like we are in the foil and on the foil it's like someone could be a mile ahead of you and you could reel them in in like two minutes yeah you need one good bump like one good bump one swell and it just literally it's like <laughs> and I figured too, like there's always gonna be like like I ended up finishing, you beat me in the last race, oh, but man. I came off race, but yeah. I came off foil, but like it was cool because regardless, if you're far behind and something happens, it's the feel the the field goes like this. Like all condenses. I mean, yeah. even typically in the past on the subs, um, the girls were, you know, thirty minutes behind. Mm -hmm. And now, like, everyone's a lot tighter. Even though the distance is probably, like, pretty big. Yeah. But the foiling, you're averaging 16 miles an hour yeah. in that channel, you know? And, like, the, the, I'd basically given up on catching you because you would... I try to follow your line. I try to get back out. And I just... I tried everything to try to catch you. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get him. I'm just going to hold my, hold my own and just not make a mistake. Totally. And then, as you said, you come off at the end. And the speed you go paddling, like, not foiling Fuck. versus the speed that you... Foiling is like, well, like that's like you got Jeffrey 2019 in Molokai. Yeah, so that was an interesting one because I was on a thousand mm -hmm. foil and he was on the latest 800 custom. It was like the first he him he had like the fastest foil mm -hmm. right before the race. Yeah, and he was like untouchable downwind, and I was like going, oh man, like I don't have anything that's like competitive top end. Yeah. And he absolutely decimated me across the channel. Like yeah. he probably, I think he was like 15 minutes ahead of me. Yeah. 
It was insane. Well, I was on the sup that year and I saw, I saw you coming around the corner and I'm like, oh, Kai's won it. And then I paddled in and I saw Jeffrey paddling on his stomach. And I'm like, I thought that would have been Kai paddling on his stomach, but you had already finished. So yeah. I had like, I was so confused. I thought I was like out of my mind because... Totally. Yeah, because I saw you come around the corner. I wrote, I was probably three, maybe not three quarters away. I was like a little over half the did like five eighths through the race like mm. i was almost like and he did he was like i could only barely see his butt i couldn't yeah. see him wow. yeah. and that year it was like blue jersey so you really couldn't see anyone yeah and i was going i was just like oh my god like he absolutely smoked me and then it was crazy because he came off foil right away because there was no low end and i ended up having a big foil and just pumped right past him and ended up beating him by 20 minutes. So how far did you get in on that day? Because I remember seeing the footage, because I, I was out there with you, but I saw the footage, and there wasn't that much swell that year. There was none. Yeah, it was like... So, t talk us through, like, had you practiced that before? No, I didn't practice that. I, I just, I already know, knew the finish so well from the SUP and mm. prone days. So I know where to go yeah. and what's the best line and what to look for sort of thing. Um, there's, but, a, there's a clip where you literally go around that rock just after China Wall, like between that gap. And everyone, yeah. I remember some of my mates like, he must have known, he must have known. Of course you did, you've done yeah. it up for so many years. But I was trying to look for, because it was pretty, it was like a good year, because mm. I think all the records got broken. It was mm. like pretty windy. And you know that part going up wind, I was trying to like hide from the wind and I was maximizing the swell. Yeah. And I went between the rock because I just knew where to go. Yeah. But I probably pumped almost halfway yeah. in and I ended up just having the endurance of, to paddle prone and sup and knee and all that. Yeah. So, I ended so, up, so you rotated between on your stomach, standing, kneeling. It just, whatever I, I started getting tired laying down, I'd go to my knees. Mm -hmm. I started getting tired that I would stand up and I don't, those boards were five, six, 24 inches wide. Yeah. So they were <laughs> slow too. Yeah, you know, fast. So slow. And so it took forever to like get in, but I ended up beating Jeffrey by 20 minutes, basically on the the fact that he just came off foil and I didn't. Yeah, because I think he came off right at China Wall. Right and, there. And you got, well, most, or half, half. I got probably halfway. Yeah. I got halfway, it really depends on the day, because that year the wind was pretty east, so there was quite a bit of a wind shadow. Yeah. Like, there was like a gotcha. little wind shadow, and that's the tricky part with all these races, is like, you don't really know until you get in there, and. You know, most recently been over there where there's like a little bit more northerly in it, and you, I don't know if you could have any foil, how big, yeah, and you could pump against 25 knots for very far, yeah. And so that's the funny thing is like, literally there could be in this next race, I I predict if it's if the wind is a certain direction with a certain strength, and no matter what foil you have, it won't matter, or there's no swell, yeah, it could end up literally being like 15 people that could win. And it's like, who has a 9-2? Yeah. Who has the, but at the same time, the 9-2 pumping up win. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. there's such an unknown and um, fastest across the channel, but then you're gonna suffer at the end, slowest across, but then you're gonna be good, but how slow? There's no one silver bullet no. equipment right now. And that's the, that's kind of why I'm stoked that they're doing the ending like that versus yeah. just the outside yeah. because it literally is just there's just a huge question mark. Yeah, yeah. I was that was my next question. It's like because they were talking about potentially starting the race a bit further north on Molokai, so mm -hmm. like and then finishing like at um like closer to Waikiki. I thought that what they should do is a same start because the start's not that bad. It's doable. It goes into bumps pretty quick, yeah. kind of like the Maui to Molokai, like yeah. small bumps, but you could yeah you, you could do it yeah. for sure. Um, I thought they should end up the outrigger. Yeah, that'd be and great. just straight in around the corner is a little upwind thing, but at the outrigger where the awards are, and yeah. it had ten extra miles, but at least it'd be dead downwind. Yeah, but they weren't gonna do that, and they're like, "Oh, do you? What do you think about stopping like right at Channel Walls?" I'm like, "It's that would be fine, but at the same time, like, there's nothing like that experience of like going where everyone's watching and the yeah. crowd because yeah. finishing is so." Out in the middle of the ocean is like, uh, yeah, yeah. you it's, know, it's a bit of a and I'm like, I honestly wanted to go in there because that's when all the other foil races were. Yeah. And it, I want to see how much better the times get. Well, that, yeah. So four years ago was the last time we raced across the channel. Yeah. On, on anything, but with the foils. And in four years, 
foiling has become essentially a different sport. Totally. The boards are different. The foils are like 40% faster, I feel like. You know, it's <laughs> maybe more. I yeah. think the, I'm trying to think what my, I can't remember what my time was. Maybe it was like two hours or 53 minutes, two hours, 50, something like. So just under three, huh? It was just under three, or maybe it was just over. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. But I always thought, I'm like, dude, in the right conditions out there, you could totally sub to it. Yeah. But yeah. it would require, you could sub to it, it would just require a bit of swell. swell too, because you can foil from the outside all the way in, even yeah. if there's wind. Yeah. However, it's been like a record flat summer here, yeah. and I could probably put money on it that it's going to be flat as a lake. Yeah. And so it's everyone's paddling at one yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's going to maybe bring the hand paddles or something just to try to get something. Yeah, what a, I didn't even look. Is that in the are. rules? I like, I feel like there is no rules in foiling right now, no, which I kind of like. It's like... Well, it's, it's the true unlimited division, isn't it? Totally. It's like yeah. however gets you across the fastest. Mm. You know, in some way, yeah, or form, you know, yeah. yeah so it's going to be super interesting, and um, I feel like Maui to Molokai was really uh, this. This was literally two days ago. Was a really well, you know, fourth, fifth, and then Kane first. Andrew Andrew Gibbon, who is literally this dark horse from here, but he was actually the the Grom who used to work at the local sub shop back in Sydney. No way. And he's moved back over here. Yeah. And he's crushing the foil. Oh, yeah. He went to school with my brother at Seabury here. And so he was in the surf team. And that's when I met him. And yeah. then he was on Oahu. And yeah. he hooked up with the Voyager crew. Yeah. And I think before he was at school with your brother, he was in Sydney. Just yeah. his mum's Australian. Yeah. yeah. And then he got really good over there. And then he moved back here. And him and Kane have just been going every day for yeah. like a year. Yeah. And obviously they they're really fast now. <laughs> yeah, obviously. And uh, so what, what's your take on that? Like, t to me, we'll, we'll chat in the car on the way down here, and like, wonder how Kai feels about that younger, you know, younger crew coming up and sort of handing it to us. But I sort of thought you'd be stoked because it just means there's a big future in it. You know. You know, I think right now, like with the to be competitive foiling. It kind of comes down to foils. Yeah. Like if you have, Kane has this advantage, he can make his own foils. Mm. And he's out there every day tuning it, shimming the front wing, shimming the back wing, yeah. and then making a brand new one. Um, Andrew has like great foil gear that he's gotten really dialed in on. Yeah. And he's, he doesn't seem to tune it like Kane does. He just sort of sets and forgets and just gets so dialed into that one. Totally. Setup. So it's like two different things. And, his, like the lift foils, like the new X series, mm. they're like good enough to be right there. Mm. And he has kind of the, um, he has the foundation of doing so many downwinders this year. Yeah. And I mean, I think, well, where Andrew ended up losing Maui to Molokai race. To the finish. Was, it was the same thing with you yeah, yeah, and me. Yeah. It was like he, that 110 he was on, he's a big guy. Yeah. He, that thing doesn't pump in flat water. Mm. And he came off foil. Yeah. And Kane was like close, but he was still like a gap behind him. Like yeah. it would have been a clear win if Andrew yeah. stayed on foil. Yeah. Cause I was able to watch the whole thing sort of happen yeah, in front yeah. of me as uh, I was yeah. coming around the reef. And, and with Kane, he was able to just pump right past him. Mm -hmm. And that's the cool thing about the foil racing, of course. Yeah. So how close was um, Eduardo to you? He came third. He was like, I was just, I had so little lift and I was just like pumping and he kind of came from way yeah, outside and like flying in and he cut across and I, you know, if I had a bigger foil that I could pump better, I think we would have ended up like kind of, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I thought with my line and where I was, I thought I would have been like right around Kane. Yeah. When I came in, yeah. Andrew would have been just a little ahead. But I just lost, like, my my low end was just so bad for the last, like, eight miles. Yeah. I was just trying yeah. to stay riding. Yeah. And, but but anyway, uh, it was Eduardo, yeah. right? He yeah. cut across and he, like, got this weird swell. Yeah. And it was like, he was riding this swell, like, pumping, but, like, it was pretty cool. Because he locked into, like, this weird little ground swell mm -hmm. and, like, made it in and had all this momentum. And it was pretty impressive. And then I... Got as far as I could and came off foil. I look back and I saw you and I'm like, frick, there's no way I can I, get this up on flat water right now. 
and then you just went I just like probably did. 15 feet from the finish. Oh, I was, was like, it was so. I was like, like oh my god. I know. I, I, well, I was, I'm like, I didn't think I was going to get you, and I got closer. I'm like, I'm just going to stay on foil here, and I'm going to get him. And then I saw you, the, your boat was yelling. You like jump up, you started paddling. He's going to flat water. He's going to get me anyway. And then you just with the wind and the flatness, I'm like, okay. Yeah, the board was a little small, and then that foil is kind of like pretty. I was on a 780, but those phantom foils are insane in really strong winds. Yeah. But low end, like you cannot pump them in it's flat at all. It's a compromise, right? Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I was pretty under lift the entire race. Oh, I, I was going to ask you that. So the line, we talked about the line and the car back, and the the young guns are out wide. They're like towards the night, pretty mm -hmm, much. Mm -hmm. And we, I feel like we took the perfect sup line, like because totally. we, we've done that race for a few years now. Yeah. Like we know that if you stick in close, the currents, the currents kind of better, and it's a much shorter, shorter line. Yeah. Um, so you must have done close to like 42 kilometers or like uh, like the shortest distance possible. You yeah, know, I were... looked, I, I kind of looked at my GPS afterwards and I thought the line was good and we were, it's just the, the race start was so early. Mm. When we ended up taking the little back to Bowie, yeah. it was like, was it perfect. finally filled yeah. in and I was like, the bumps are overhead. Yeah. And on the sub, I forgot, it takes so much longer to go and do it yeah. that you're always there after the wind line makes it. Yeah. Whereas on the foils, yeah, we, beat, we it. beat the wind line. It was yeah. glassy for like seven miles. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I thought I had a great line. I I knew the great thing about the foil is how far you can cover them. Mm. Like I felt like if I went out there on my foil that I had, I would have, there was a chance I would be really screwed. Because if it got too light and I had to quarter back up, yeah, I wouldn't make it on my foil. So I was like, I wanted to like chase them down that way. I thought they went too far to be honest, yeah. but I wanted to chase them. But I decided not to for fear that I would it would be light and I would get stuck and yeah. I would really lose. Yeah, yeah. Like I would I would be down to like twentieth because I'd be paddling on my stomach well, yeah. in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, so many wing foilers. It was like a graveyard the last you know two or three miles just wing totally. foilers just paddling with the wing dragging but yeah that was the risk and like from from my point of view you just stuck to that inside line yeah and you're like i'm here now and i'm just going for it i tried to go in as close as you were and i just felt like i couldn't hardly foil in there like it was it was like speed bumps it was like he was going over 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 it was hard because you know the um i who was I? I was just talking to Annie about this because Jeffrey yeah. ended up staying for the next day and it was yeah. lighter wind. Yeah. And he said it was the weirdest race he'd ever done going against the other Aussie guys on Armstrong mm -hmm. was because you'd get stuck in the swell and yeah. it wasn't enough power in the swell to go over them. Yeah. So you were just permanently stuck in the swell. So it was just like a line across the... And that's what I felt. Like I was in these swells and I couldn't get over them because mm. my foil was a little small for those conditions. Yeah. It was glassy so there was no wind push. Yeah. And I was kind of just having to stay locked in to stay up on foil. Yeah. And I was watching everyone and I think everyone has a similar feeling even outside. Yeah. Because no one changed distances. Mm -hmm. Where it ended up happening was if you had a little better low end, at the end I really started to sink. Yeah. Like I was well, the, watching the, the, the wind died. It was there were glassy bumps. Yeah. It was kind of a fun feeling. Yeah. When you're but not <laughs> when you're racing. Yeah. The yeah. only other place so I, the one of the funnest races I've ever done, actually one of the funnest downwind coast runs was the Kauai Nepali yeah. Coast. Uh -huh. And there is the best swells I've ever been on glassy. Yeah. It'll be like overhead high and complete sheet glass, yeah. but you'll be on one swell for three or four miles. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. So that reminded me of that, but it was like those swells were this <laughs> yeah, big. I was like I was like, frick, maybe I can like cut across the reef, you yeah. know? Yeah. But it was so shallow, I was like, I'm not risking my foil no. for the reef right now. Yeah. Much. So why don't you talk to us about the falls? Because that you were riding and I noticed they weren't the like because you explain to us the hydropole company and how that like, um yeah so years. the before you know the hydropole company was just myself my brother Rich, mm -hmm. and then our friend Carlos mm -hmm. who lives here and he's just a real great designer and and it, it kind of started like when I stopped working with Alex on GoFoil stuff I was looking for something else and nothing else existed mm -hmm. And um, um, Carlos was an avid kite foiler. Yeah. 
and and so we just started this relationship where we'd make custom foils and we're like always toying with the idea of making production yeah and we ended up licensing the hydros to mfc yeah the design mm -hmm. and then they manufactured it and gotcha. they kind of took the design and did what with what but they did but that was separate from the hydrofoil company. that was separate from the hydrofoil company it wasn't like their hydrofoil company mm -hmm. and then um and then we made the sickest we're like winging was getting really hot and we ended up making the sickest um, wing setup. We called the line like the Venom line, and it was just so. It's still probably my favorite foils for winging, mm -hmm. like stability, boosting, control, just yeah. a full surf foil. Yeah. And he made all my channel crossing foils back in like up to 2019, because after that there was no more races. Yeah. And um, so, long story short, we were gonna do it, and then like with the supply chain crashing and stuff we kind of just took a steep back step back and my brother got into other things carlos got into other things i don't have the time to do it and so yeah it's on you know indefinite pause right now yeah and so this year i had to start looking for other foils to ride mm. and um i ended up losing my my custom high my custom hydrofoil company in bali I was gonna on ask. the reef <laughs> oh, no. and i called it because i was like it was so like when we first went out, there was only swells. I'm like, if you fall, you're, and I had straps, you're not gonna lose it on the rocks. And while we were out there, the swell kind of picked up and the tide <laughs> dropped and it started breaking. And yeah. I had too short of a mast. Mm -hmm. I had like a 70 CM mast and I yeah. wish I had like an 80. Yeah, yeah. Cause you know, it gets bumpy oh, and I sure. ventilated and yeah. I fell and my foil went on the rocks. And for how gnarly it was, the foil was actually okay. The, the aluminum fuselage bent a little bit, the wing tips, but it was bad enough I couldn't use it on my trip. Yeah. And I was like thinking, I was like, oh, I need a new foil. Is there anyone out there that would send me a foil to Bali? Because mm -hmm. this is foil in paradise. Yeah. And um, the first person I reached out to was Phantom Foiling because I saw they were making new foils and yeah. they looked interesting. And also I liked their their high aspect foils looked cool. Yeah. And I was like thinking ahead, I'm like, ah, oh, I need like a foil for Molokai to walk because I don't I'm not gonna get any custom ones this year yeah and and they were just like they sent out Tom Constant yeah and I met him down there and we ended up having the best time ever the foils felt great in the surf there was no downwind to try the downwind stuff and yeah. but they were, the foils were super fun f a fresh feeling yeah kind of like ordering a different surfboard from a different shaper yeah yeah it's like it's just a uh, Something new. Uh, just something new, something different, and it was like cool. And then, um, and then Tom was like, "I'm gonna do Molokai Oahu." I'm like, "Sick, let's go!" You know, mm -hmm. it'd be so fun. And then I came back here and started doing runs. But you never know until you get out into a race where you're gonna kind of end up. For sure. Like, because everyone keeps their time secret. You yeah. know, it's like, or people are like, "Oh, it was 35 minute downwinder," even though yeah. they did 31. Yeah, depends from, on where you start it from, where you finish it from. Yeah, and so, it. and you try to line up with people, but you don't know if someone's like sandbagging yeah. or pushing or oh, what. Oh yeah, you don't know. No and it's fun. Called the cards close. Yeah. And so I was like, kind of going like, "All right, like, whatever." You know, M to M will be my. Um, the race where I'll know and it it's true those fan foils are in absolutely insane top end yeah like absolutely insane mm -hmm. um I did a bunch of, I swapped with Kane a few times on wings and stuff and you know he works with KT now so yeah there's like it's this awkwardness where like <laughs> we're like working together because I'm ride with KT and yeah. he's designing for KT yeah but he's racing so yeah it's like what's there's no real off limits to ask but there is he yeah. can say no of course yeah. and so i'm like kane can i just have one of your foils like oh there's not enough time to make one i'm like i <laughs> know there is yeah. you know <laughs> but, <laughs> but but yeah. no i understand kane's kane's awesome but yeah regardless it was like the the phantom was really designed around windsurf foiling mm -hmm. and so those foils when you get over 20 miles an hour kick into gear yeah and they don't have a top end they just keep going keep, keep, keep going stuff, send a bigger bump, bigger but that wind. being said um that was their first time they had ever made one apparently a downwind foil yeah so there's no not a whole lot of testing behind it mm -hmm. um and i'm not sponsored by them but they just kind of flowed me a foil and yeah and then i ended up getting an afs foil as yeah, well yeah i saw that on your boat I was and like those are again it's like they're two french brands right yeah they're two french brands yeah. and that was another one 
I didn't, I just ended up buying it, you mm. know, because I was like, I was like, if I don't like it, I don't want to be like, mm. I got to ride it sort of thing. Yeah. And, and it felt like a great foil. However, the problem with all these foils is, especially if they're designed somewhere else, mm -hmm. Hawaii is so different. So specific. That like what might be insane in Europe might not just work here. Mm. Like I was talking to Tom about this before he came. He was kind of, he was like, oh, why, why is everyone using such short masks? Why is everyone using such long skinny boards versus, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Cause he's used to like that slower moving swell in Europe that's really steep. Yeah. You know, and you mm. can get away with a longer mass and the bumps are shorter. Shorter and steeper, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm like, dude, in Hawaii, it's just faster. I don't know what to say. Like, yeah. short mass is faster, longer boards faster. I think, ironically, heavier people, which you would have thought the lightest people would be fastest, mm. but the heavier guys seem to be faster. Like, Dave Kalama, you know, I don't think the conditions suited him this last event. No, it wasn't windy enough. But... Yeah. He's crazy times, and he's big. Um, Andrew, a big guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's like yeah. well over six feet, yeah. maybe six two. Yeah, he's closer and he's, to. And he's built. He's, yeah, he has to be yeah. like one ninety yeah. of just like flex. And yeah. Kane's a big guy too. And yeah. I think there is something about inertia that can like. I think carry especially in the big bumps. Totally. You know, as soon as you get like mid channel, the bigger you are, the more you can hold your foil down. The more you like accelerate through. Whereas lighter guys have the advantage in a lot of stuff, yeah. but you're just like floating on the surface. I 100% because it's just, I thought the lightest guys would always have been the fastest, but mm. it's like the foils have gotten so good that, you know. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like, there's a weird balance. Yeah, that, I felt like the Maori, I was really curious to see how the Maori Molokai would go because it's been four years since anyone's been in one place to race. And as you said, unless you're racing, you don't really know where anyone's sitting because no. people sandbag and and and, keep and there was no races before. Nothing before. Where everyone was there. Yeah, nothing yeah. before. So I thought there would have been like one four that was like stand out fastest. But to me, like the top five or top six, everyone's on a different foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like one. It was there was the the skill was important. Totally. And then there was a range of foils that was important. Like the, the size, I think, was important. I'd say to me, I think you have uh, to be at the top level mm. to be able to like fight for the win. You obviously have to have great physical endurance mm -hmm. and, and then you have to be technically really savvy with the bumps. Mm. But the defining factor I think now is still the foil and everyone has maybe the fastest foil mm. for a specific condition. Yeah. So one day to the next, someone could have the faster foil. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it just comes up, like, I think it comes, like, for example, Kane wouldn't have won that if the race had ended Finishing in a lot of minutes. He probably would have been second. Yeah. Because his foil is better low end, still carries a great high end. Yeah. But Andrew, being a big guy on a 110, yeah. was able to push that thing. And I don't know anything about your foil, so I can't comment. But, like, with my foil, I'm like, fuck, if it was... 50 knots, I probably would have smoked everybody. Yeah. Because it just wouldn't have no top end. But that being said, who knows? You yeah, know, like, that's when we don't know until we try it out in races like that. And Mo Maui to Molokai compared to Molokai to Oahu is an interesting one because that closer resembles Maliko. Mm. Like that is a, it probably leans more Maliko than it leans more Molokai to Oahu. Mm. And I still think there's so many questions for Molokai to Oahu that have yet to be answered. I totally agree. Because the swells are different. There's a there's a, like two major bands of current that you have to pass through there. Yeah. There's the real upwind leg, which is a solid mile. Mm. And it's 20 knots offshore. It's it's gonna be really interesting because like someone in fifth, someone in sixth could win the whole thing. Yeah. Or somebody could absolutely just dominate. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think, really I think yeah, like the Pilolo is such a, it's a small channel. Yeah. You know, we were halfway through the race, we were pretty much done with the channel and we were in this sort of more protected, well, um, you know, that from Kamalo, mm -hmm. it's clean. Yeah. Like it was. It's like groomed. Super groomed, which for a suck was awesome, but on a foil, it's like. You get stuck. It's, you just get stuck in the mud. 
Unless it was like, I've done foiling out there where it's like, you go in the afternoon and it's nuclear. Yeah. It's a totally different game at that point. Yeah. Where the swells are so spread apart, you can barely keep up with them even on a foil. Yeah. You're probably doing your fastest downwind times on some one single wave. But I really feel like the cave is going to be a lot faster because that middle section, like the, the, the channel is longer. And we, for me, I was going much faster than the first half of the pilot. Like I think the, half the, I mean, half the, most of the, the time's going to be added on at the end. Yeah, oh, of course. I'm saying from, yeah. from you know, to, to, to China Wall, I guess. To China Wall, I would say, I'd say you could do, I think you're for sure sub two. Yeah. I personally think you're actually like 145. Yeah. And, and I think depending on the day, depending where you come off, it could be 30 to 40 minutes of going up when paddling. Uh, yeah. And when I, in 2019, I was completely physically fine. Cause you know, at a certain point you're, you can't outwork the foil you're on mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that was the case in 2019 where my foil wouldn't go much faster. So I knew I couldn't keep up with Jeffrey. Um, so you kind of consolidate, you're like, okay. Well, no, I mean, you just can't go any faster. Yeah. So I basically was, you know, it was like, I was fine, energy-wise, like completely fine. Like could have, like if we ended out there, I could have like gone surfing and been like super mellow. I'm pretty and, sure you did go surfing after, didn't you? Well, I did, but the, the part that made me the most tired was the final mile. Yeah. I was like, I was like, actually tired when I got in, like yeah. exhausted. I was like, okay, I thought this channel was gonna be easy until then. Yeah. But then again, remember, in, was 2016 when it was a so, bombing? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That'd be good for the foil. The foil, <laughs> if it was that big, easily make it to the dry land. Okay, yeah, but what do you think- But it's shallow. But what do you think of the channel? When, on that year, there was not much wind. Yeah, it wasn't much wind, and the problem with good south swell is it, gets like this out there yeah you just we, we just got to pray that it's like 30 knot straight east wind yeah straight east yeah otherwise you're gonna be like turning right which unfoils fine it's, yeah um it's gonna be interesting the lines because pilolo there's once you get to molokai you can go wide or you can stay in but like in molokai you know, prone paddle boarding, it was always whether you went straight, super south, or super north. Mm. And a lot of years, if you went north, you were way faster. Yeah. A lot of years, if you went south, you were way faster. Yeah. Sometimes going straight was faster. Yeah. And yeah, I remember the year you and Connor went too far south and Travis got the win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were way ahead, but we just pushed each other too yeah. south. Yeah. And I mean, that was, that. that's going to be the interesting thing on the foil. like which line is going to be the fastest yeah because um i think one will be faster yeah because it's what current you run into yeah as much as it'll help the swell you're going to be going slower yeah that's the beauty of you know downwind racing and especially over here in hawaii you could be the fastest but you take the wrong line you're done it, it, it's like coming over this year i was like look people saying oh how do you think you go and i'm like look i could come 15th I could win, I could come 30th. You just never know because it's been four years since we've raced. Yeah. And, and you don't, you gotta test your foil. Yeah. And if, unless you're going against other foils, you other people, no you have no idea. No idea. And then even You're like, like, I think it's fast. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I think it looks good, but you could just have good conditions or whatever it is. So, yeah. um, or so developing your foil, like you guys have your own foil brand. Yeah. And it's like, develop your foil around the conditions you're in. Yeah. And then you come to Hawaii and you're like, Oh, yeah. you know, and then you just hope that you just nailed it. Yeah, yeah, so... Which so, I think you guys, you're pretty fast, so... Yeah, we're happy with how it performed, and yeah. I think the, for us, what we looked at doing was creating, like, a range. Like, it can go fast, and it can go slow, and that, the, the, I think that's the trick, but if you create too big a range, you limit either the top end or the bottom end. Yeah, you're so kind of average everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah so sure. it's So, uh... Uh, why don't we go a little bit into board development too? Um, what what sort of you're using the KT Dragonfly? Yeah. Yep. Um, what sort of dimensions are you running and volume and? Um. Well, I have a new board coming for Molokai, but the board I ran, I've been running lately, has been a seven two, seventeen inches wide. Mm -hmm. 
they're very thick. I don't know, yeah, yeah. four inches more, yeah. five inches thick. I don't know. They're, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how thick the Some thing more. is, but yeah. it's, it's interesting because at the time when I first got my first dragonfly, I was like, oh, six, six, 18 wide. That yeah. seems like it's a, it feels big after prone foiling a four, four yeah. all the time. Yeah. And then, and then I was like, and then everyone started going longer. I was like, oh, I should try a longer one. And then the longer one somehow felt faster. Mm. Maybe there was like more leverage out forward. And then everyone was like, for the prone paddling in, you know? And so I was so like, how long are you going for your new one? Uh, 7.4 again, okay. but it's just a different design. It's a yep. little wider. It's a different nose. It's a lot that I learned from big wave surfing. Yeah. And so it's like, we kind of incorporated that and... That's cool, your big wave. You, you, it goes full circle. Yeah, you know, and but yeah. you're shaping those big wave boards and... I know Keith, Keith to wool, yeah. you know, makes the best windsurf boards on earth, the best tow boards, the best big wave paddling guns, amazing short boards. You know, I'd say he probably makes some of the best downwind boards. Um, he t puts a huge amount of development and, you know, with Kane on the team too, mm -hmm. the, the development on the boards and their new foils are pretty insane. Yeah. Everything's like moving pretty quick and, um, my, I love my boards for sure. Yeah. But I think it's also the, as good as the boards are, or as good as the foils are, there has to be a good pairing. Yeah. Like, like yeah, a real, match. they have to kind of match. You kind of have to develop your board around a foil or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think his boards are my new board. I'm so excited for Cause the thing is just, it gets up so good in flat water and yeah. it kind of paddles like a bigger board, but mm -hmm. it's small. So you yeah. have the advantage of the pumping and yeah, the, yeah. the, quartering into the wind because that's i think mm -hmm. a lot of the guys that are going to be on nine o's yeah you know you're going to be sidewind a lot depending like when Mola, maui to molokai was north b kind of winds yeah and it was a little bit of quartering can you imagine kind of north style winds you're literally going sideways so much easier crossing from maui to molokai than molokai to a for sure yeah, it was way nicer but yeah like i mean well, actually, How big is your board? I'm riding a 76 by 18. Mm -hmm. It's like 103 liters. So actually, what, what liters are you running? I don't even know. I I pretty I I don't know what the liters are. Just because. For me, I found sure. it's, it's kind of it's hard. I can't really like a surfboard. I can look at and yeah. be like, that's a 30 liter board. Yeah, yeah. But on these boards, they're so interesting looking. You're like. <laughs> What it's like they're spaceships. They're narrow. They're narrower than a shortboard, and they're long. And it's like, are they a lot of volume? Are they not? You mm, know, mm. they're obviously because you can stand on them. But. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I found. The board I had, I actually got this one made up just to come over here. And the board I had was ninety three liters. And if I was paddling like in the water, my my back foot was wet. Mm. And for me, I'm like, it just meant I had to paddle. And I had to get up onto the plane, the board on the plane, and then I could foil. Uh, Whereas I just jumped my liters up to 103 liters, so 10 liters more. And I mean, I could, before, like just standing there, I'm dry. Yeah, so And much then as nicer. soon as I paddle, I, like it's straight to foil. So, yeah, it, to me, it's made a huge difference. Um, For sure. Just, and it was the, sa the board's exactly the same, it's just the liter, it's just a little bit more. I think everyone, it's gonna be this year's, is ex this event. This year is going to be exciting, but next year's events keep even more exciting mm. because Everyone's now something. there's a there's like a foundation for mm. development after not being that much development for four years. Yeah, everyone's been guessing yeah. for the last four years. Yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Um, why don't we start wrapping it up? Um, what? What do you like? Actually, how much training have you been doing for this race? Um, I mean, because you, you, you've got a lot of stuff going on. You got your big wave stuff. You, you're trying to do your, you know, the flips. You're just in Alaska doing backflips with Travis. Yeah, like, yeah. So I mean, you've been busy. I've been busy. I don't. I mean, the good thing is, is I've always maintained a really like physically. Physically, I feel as fit, if not more fit than anyone, because I'm always doing stuff. I'm mm -hmm. always training. However, it's like. I think where maybe my weakness is this year has been just uh, maybe equipment development. Mm -hmm. If I have the technical capabilities of going downwind and I have the the um, you know the physical endurance, which I'm, like I said, I'm always training. 
I think my weak point right now is just having the right foil for the right conditions sort of mm -hmm. thing. Cause I'm not getting a custom foil. I'm just like, everything I've gotten has just been like what I see on the internet. I'm like, oh, I'll try that, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. looks fast and it is in certain conditions. Yeah. And so finding the right foil has been like the biggest mountain to climb. Like, how, I, many, how many foils have you tried? Mm, I've tried a bunch. I've tried all, I've tried the lifts, they're great. I've tried the Phantoms, the AFS, um, tried Canes, Canes felt ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I'm like, can come on. Like, you know, like <laughs> just come on, man. And, it, but, uh, you know, that's like pretty much anything that I think would be fast that I could get my hands on. Cause yeah. there's, there's like a lot of great foils out there, yeah. but to get like a real specific downwind, high aspect, more than 10 aspect ratio, you yeah. know, like 10 to 13, yeah, yeah. that's kind of hard to find. Yeah. Cause a lot of them are lower. They're high aspect, but they're like nine aspect. And at mm. that point they're good, but they're like the a little ones. draggy, you yeah, know? Yeah. It's just like it, finding uh, that fine line. A lot has changed in the last six months in foil design. Crazy, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Like the, the Lift 120, that was high aspect. That was called the HA. And totally. Now, and now there's the 110X, cause it's like high aspect maximum. To be, com yeah, that's 13. To, yeah, compared to the, the, the Lift 120 is like nine and a half. And the Lift 120 is a great foil, but like it was never, it's not, I don't think a competitive foil. Mm. It's interesting, well, because it was like not high aspect enough for being a 120 maybe. Yeah. For their design. Yeah, yeah. Cause everyone has their own look, but I mean, talking to like, I think like someone like Andrew would take the 150 before he would take the 120. Yeah, which is interesting. Because it would still be fast. Like the 120 is 700 and like 76, square inches and the 150 is like 995. Mm. But somehow the 150 they're saying is faster. Mm. But it could be for his weight, I don't know. It's just like- And there's foil sections and there's outlines and there's so many things going on. You change on. something by a millimeter? Yeah. You hit the reef wrong? Do you hear what Kane said? So he was saying his new foil, he, was, he wasn't too stoked on it. He was walking down to, um, down to do the run and he hit his foil on a tree and he chipped the, the trailing edge. And he was like, oh, I'm just going to do the run now and I'll fix it up later. Did the run. It was his best run he's ever done. He's like, I'm not fixing that chip. No, it's insane. The chip is what he told me was, is the magic. I do not doubt it for a second because <laughs> it could be some water flow thing where it's like, yeah. as the water runs down the wing, it hits that chip and like, maybe it, it doesn't, it's not big enough to ventilate, yeah. but it's small enough to like consolidate. Yeah. Like does the opposite, you know? Yeah. There's like, we, we all have so much to learn and you know, we're, we're learning with six months into code foils and mm -hmm. we're figuring out what works and what doesn't. And uh, it's, uh, it's an exciting time to be part of foiling. And, and like I said, when we were paddling out, um, we we're talking about the possibility of flat water foil races totally. and how there's dock starters, which is awesome, but we were thinking the stand-up paddle sort of opens it up that little bit more. I think we're a bit biased because we've done the whole stand-up thing, but it, it allows you to have that dock wherever you are. I think, I think you do, I think you would do, I like that idea. Like the dock foiling is one thing, but if you come down, it's over mm -hmm. the race and whoever kind of gets ahead ends up sort of winning and you can't make the, it too long because then not everyone can actually make the finish. And it's like, yeah. what I like about the sup is who can get off the line onto foil. It's a real physical achievement yeah. to like flat water sup. And then it really like, it really keeps you like not going too small of a foil, mm. but it also like, you want to go small enough yeah. so you're faster. But then I would, I would make it so, I would always tune the course to make it long enough where somebody on a big foil could probably yeah. do the whole thing, yeah. but barely. Yeah. And somebody on a smaller foil would get way ahead, but couldn't maybe maintain the, the whole, whole thing distance. and would come down and have to get back up. And it would be just this psychotic race, you know? <laughs> and also, yeah, we're from <laughs> sub background, but I just think that maybe, maybe now that stand up, and the hardest part about stand up paddle racing was getting your boards everywhere. Mm. And now that stand up paddle racing so, I don't want to say dead, but it's quiet. It's quieter in Hawaii and Australia, that's and, for sure. And Europe, maybe it's okay, still. but like, at least that would still be stand-up paddling. Mm. Yeah. You know, in some sort of way, it would just yeah. be like, 
Because, okay, you ask a America's Cup sailor, and they would probably tell you flying on a foils is completely different than, you know, riding a monohull that's doing nine knots or something mm. versus going 50 knots. Yeah. And, but to the layman, it's still sailing. Yeah. And I think with stand-up paddling, people would still consider it stand-up paddling. Yeah. Because what would end up happening, too, is to, like, save your legs, people would start paddling with paddling their... More, longer paddles. Longer um, paddles, you know? the boys are using adjustable paddles. They start with a short paddle, and they make it longer once they're up, and they just sort of tap along. 100%. So yeah. it's like, I think that could be a way for stand-up paddling to kind of, like... Reinvent itself. And imagine, imagine if you did a race through waves, because people are doing beach start or paddling to like races. But again, it's not. I don't think. I think you could keep the group tighter with sub. Yeah. And you could make the course. Imagine the battle of the paddle style race that long. It'd be. Epic. Where you at one point you're gonna come down. Yeah. And you're maybe gonna have rest and paddle and like. Maybe just get to that buoy and come around and get back onto foil mm -hmm. onto a swell. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have the beach finish because you'd tear your foil apart. Yeah, you'd have to have deep water finish. But I, I think that would be like the most crazy race to watch. Yeah, you I know, agree. the the wing the wing foiling is taken off totally. Um, the course racing in particular. Personally, I'd love to see a hybrid of like winging to like ditch the wing and see the anchor. There's the anchor yeah. man's, and then there's I've been doing the deflate. There's so many ways that you can sort of incorporate all aspects of foiling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have an upwind leg and then into a downwind leg, into a surf finish, I think. I mean, that sounds pretty cool as if you started the race and it was like course race upwind. Yeah. And then, yeah, ditch your wing. Or, you know, in order, because I think everyone would take just a giant wing and a huge foil to get upwind. Yeah. But you also have like a, some sort of with the wing a downwind component. Yeah. Maybe a jumping component. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like uh, a think, super cross. I there's, there could be this. But imagine, uh, yeah, you bail the wing and yeah. you go downwind. Yeah. And then you surf in. Yeah. I don't know. Speed and style. The, um, uh, yeah, you've seen the clips of um, Adam Bennett's out water goes. Mm -hmm. Imagine setting up a few markers out there and you have to like, you all take off out the, at the back and you've got to sort of slalom through the waves. All the way through the finish. I think personally, I think that'd be an awesome spectacle. You know, that'd be that'd be something. I think there's just a lot to to evolve. <laughs> it's it's fun because it's like, I mean, I never in my wildest dreams thought that 70 year olds would be doing downwind foiling because mm. it was hard enough. Where I was like, it's probably gonna be like kind of, you know, younger athletes that train all the time. Yeah. And now the foils are so good, you're like, okay, well, what else is possible? Mm. And then with the wings, you know? Mm. Oh, the wings. Wings is the easiest way to learn how to foil. It's off. It is yeah. down that local lake back home. All the windsurfers are now wing foiling. Yeah. And there's little pockets of these flat water locations that people are just loving. And then they transition into the waves. Yeah. And then they end up ditching the wing. They want to surf foil. And then they downwind. They downwind. Without the wing. Like all the people here, they start with the wing. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I don't need the wing. I can go on my past stand about. Yeah. And then they do prone downwinders. Mm. Yeah, that's it's there's like different levels. So many, and it's the 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 goalposts keep moving too as everything develops. It's been a. It's the been best a, thing for foiling though is that there is so many people making foils now because it's just like forcing development. Mm. There's not just like oh this is as good as we can make. It's like oh somebody else had this other idea. Yeah. And then you see it and you're like oh my god. Yeah. They figured something out. Yeah. That's just a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. And it's just moving, making everything better and more enjoyable for all of us. I got one more question for you. Mm -hmm. So did you see Olivia Piana's world record foil? I did. Like 284 kilometers, 14 so hours. So gnarly. How many miles is that? Oh, it'd be... What do you reckon, like 200 or 180 miles? 200 That's miles? insane. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. I was wondering if she was going to come here and do the race. I'm like, this is going to be a sprint. Yeah, yeah, seriously. You know, That's going to be easy for her. I'm wondering when, when you're going to have a crack at it because you've got, you've got the boat. You've got the conditions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the longest run I've ever done. It was early, day foil, mm -hmm. early days of foiling was, I think I did 56 miles. Yeah. And it was from Big Island to Maui. Yeah, I remember watching that. That was like, yeah. and that was that was like a long. time. It was twenty sixteen as well. Yeah. Foils but, come a long way since then. But I mean, to me, the the downwind foil. There's no reason why you couldn't go thousands of miles. Mm. It really is just comes down to 
conditions. And, 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 well, as long as the wind goes, but yeah. then your physical ability to keep doing it. Mm. I think at a certain point you'll have to like be able to go switch stance. Yeah. You yes. know, to not get like um, record rate. Well, or... well, I did the Guinness. So I made it a bit more official. I had like, um, but I only did, I did 213 kilometers. That's like 120 miles. It was, That's I think insane. someone drilled up from, it'd be like from Hana to um, Oahu. That, that's the equivalent distance of yeah Hawaii. yeah because well so from here from hokipa mm -hmm. or maliko to um diamond head mm -hmm. is like that was a when i because i've done that on multiple crafts but not just straight foiling because i was pre-foiling that was i think it was like 150 miles yeah to diamond Head. okay yeah so that's a long way that's a long way like yeah. and it's but i mean he that's the thing is like that run on a foil here super doable mm. like well, absolutely the most doable thing i mean you could do it tomorrow yeah and it's like on a foil no problem but there is sections where it gets crazy light mm -hmm. would, you, would you go would you go pilola or would you go north i would go north, north yeah for sure because there's a huge wind shadow yeah. on molokai That's what I was thinking. and you would just probably be like 10 miles of sheet glass yeah because you just get I've, I've and you'd be that. really low yeah. to get to oahu yeah you could get to diamond head no problem but you'd have to like oh, I'd be cutting right It'd like be... when i did it the only thing is and this is funny about the start of molokai to oahu and them wanting to start north there's like a current line that hits the north part of molokai mm -hmm. and in doing that crossing doing the north shore of molokai going from here to there a couple times that is the sharkiest place I've ever been from here to there. Yeah. Like that corner. It's because the current line hits. It's really deep and there's a lot of fish. Yeah. And that's where all the biggest tigers are. Yeah. Like I'm not even capping. Like, yeah. Like I feel so much safer starting the race where we started. Yeah. And my mole, because everyone gets trailed. I think last year, who was it? Ryan Funk got like followed by a tiger shark. Tomo got hit by a shark in 2018 or 2019. Uh, foiling? Yeah, foiling. He got like the, the, the foil, like the, the shark hit the foil and he stayed up, but he was, he said he was just so rattled. Afraid. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, just that's the thing in Hawaii. It's like, there could be one place that's really mellow and you could literally go a mile over there. And all of a sudden it's like a little more intense. Like yeah. let's say a little more concentrated and there just in my experience, it's just like, oof. Yeah. That's why when they were like going more north, I'm like, mm, if we have like 70 people sitting in the water with their feet hanging, like, yeah. and yeah. there's a bunch of foils that are humming, yeah. I'm like, I'm not saying someone's going to get attacked. I'm just saying that like starting in the bay Risk and assessment. getting up yeah. like in shallower water, Yeah. not that they don't go in there, but I just, you yeah. know, yeah. I don't know. I was well, thinking like, about that. I'm like, I think we could start, everyone could get up in flat-ish water. Yeah. It also adds another level of, um, like, skill. And it's yeah, like, yeah. it's like, it shouldn't be an easy race. You know, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's the most prestigious downwind race in the world. It's yeah. the world championship of downwind racing. And to, to make it, to, to tweak it, to make it easier, I yeah. think doesn't really align even, with what they've done. I even wanted the wingers to have to tack up wind 45 times yeah. because <laughs> the channel's pretty tight and it's yeah. shallow, so they would have to, like, yeah. you'd probably almost be able to beat a winger upwind in a way. Yeah. Not quite, but yeah. but it was like, I honestly think this is the first and last year they'll allow winging in it Yeah. because they're pretty tight about safety. Yeah. And there's no way a boat's keeping up with a winger across that channel because it's really, like, you know, on a reach winging. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you need a jet ski to keep up with a yeah. winger. They're yeah. gonna be doing like 30 knots. <laughs> the wingers, and they, and they cover. Like they don't go straight. They, like everyone's going a different direction on the wing. It's yeah, it's like, like <sighs> that was the fun part when we were going, I was entertained. I'm like, okay, someone went too close to Molokai. They're going to Lanai now. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I and I'm seeing, like, oh, the wind's dying. I'm like, oh, yeah. I kept seeing, kept seeing Alex, I see the big red, the no big, foil wing. Yeah, yeah. I kept thinking it was the Kamalo buoy. <laughs> yeah, he was on like a six meter wing. He said eight. Oh shoot, no yeah. way. I yeah. was just guessing. Yeah. yeah, he told me he was on an eight and he popped it. He had to paddle towards the end. No. So many stories, so many wingers were paddling towards the end, but he had, he literally had, and, and Oscar on the foil, he, he hit the reef, he didn't, had never been there before. Oh yeah. So it's all these stories. Tom hit the foil. Hit, hit, hit the reef as well? Yeah, and Molokai is like Tahiti style reef. It's yeah. really like, um, 
there's a lot of uh, like coral heads. Yeah. And so when you hit your foil, you f screw your foil up. Like, it's bummer. Like, like it's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, I was like, I was like, mm, I could catch that swell over it. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm uh, like, I don't know if this is my foil for the next race. Yeah. Uh, I better go around. <laughs> yeah. Play it safe. Play the long game. No, it's super cool. I'm like, I'm just stoked everyone's doing it. And it's like kind of just, it's uh, satisfying knowing that an idea was actually a good idea. Mm. Cause like, you know, sport, unless somebody's, unless people, unless kids are doing a sport and taking it to the next level. And if the next generation is not outdoing the previous generation. Mm. Well, actually that's, then, we're, then we're, it's we're like the dads. Where the dads do it. Pretty much. <laughs> and yeah, and, and I think it's the death of a sport. I literally, like, if you look at every sport that doesn't exist anymore, it's like when the next generation doesn't, like, mm -hmm. take, keep taking it over, yeah. you know, pushing it farther. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily happened in foiling it, but, but we're in the earliest stages with foiling where at least there's so much life in it. It's oh. this new hot thing. And who knows what the... I thought stand-up paddling would be big forever yeah and it was sort of like eaten by by foiling yeah like kind yeah, of yeah. cannibalized in, a yeah, little bit in australia for sure yeah. and and here as well um for me um in 2019 uh when when you won the foil and i won the unlimited stand-up when uh i was stoked i won it because i wanted to foil it and i wanted to win it on the unlimited before i could go foil it oh for sure and then they didn't sure. run it for 2020 2021 2022 you're like it's what back, the hell it's back this year but now i'm stoked that the foiling happened but i paddled that for my dad and when i crossed the finish line you came up to me because we finished at a similar time yeah. you gave me a two-hour head, two head start yeah. and you came up you gave me a hug and you said um you said your dad was already proud of you but he's even more proud of you now yeah so that was That's really sick. really special for me because you know, we've been competing each other for a long time and, and my dad since passed away. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, I was so happy that I could, um, you know, he supported me to do the stand-up paddle thing and uh, he couldn't be there that year. But it was special for me that you took your time to come, come across and say that. So thank you. Of course. You. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I was super stoked to see you get it, you know, mm. and it was cool that you were there was still major competition in it, mm. you know? Yeah. So it, it, it wouldn't yeah. be like, I think now doing it, it might not feel the same because no, you didn't have like yeah. the same names yeah. sort of thing. But like being able to win it in its sort of prime mm. is like super special. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I think... And that was like a record year too. Like, yeah. It was like a really windy year. It was super strong winds. Yeah. yeah. What was your time on that? I was like remember? a minute behind Travis's time. Oh, uh, like you almost broke the all-time record. If I had if I had a wave, like one little... So he had the advantage the last time was catching a wave. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I reckon. I'm like, hey, you got a wave. No, for sure. Yeah. Like it was like probably like the... But to me, it didn't matter because I was just out there to, to, to put my name well, in the book for my old man and to sort of... I put a lot of time and effort into the stand-up and... You know, following your footsteps, to be honest, you know, you and you and Connor had those battles, and then Travis, and um, and I'm stoked to be able to say, okay, similar to you, what you did, you you won the unlimited, and you were like, okay, now I'm foiling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to win the unlimited to be just because it was like, you try to. I got second so many times or third, mm. and I was like, man, like I just want to win this thing so bad, yeah. and just like be able to like close that chapter. And yeah. to be honest. Like this year, they were almost gonna do Sunday was gonna be yeah Saturday they were, were do gonna, were the gonna, foil yeah. and then Sunday was gonna be or yeah the opposite opposite was, yeah foil and I was like you know what I will one hundred percent do the foil and then go do the unlimited yeah. like yeah. why not yeah yeah and I was, I was hoping they would do that because then maybe other foilers would do like the same. yourself would be like let's go unlimited mm. and it'd be sick because you'd have done the channel been so slap tired <laughs> yeah. and then you'd be like all right we're going again yeah it's like a multi it's like a tahitian event you know they did the multi-day event yeah so maybe one i mean yeah. i think i think the race will only get bigger and bigger with foiling <laughs> And that's going to only attract well, more. Well, there's and more. 70 entrants in foil. Yeah. Whoa. It's insane. 70. So there was 40 on the sub foil yeah. for the Maori to Molokai. So there's almost double for Molokai to Hawaii yeah. on the sub foil. Yeah. Wow. I think maybe there's, that includes some wings, but I don't think there's as many wingers as there are sub foilers. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Um, 
I think we wrap it up. But thanks so much for your time, Kai. It's been um, thank you, James. Been Stoked unreal. to be on. Yeah. Stoked the to catch have you up. The Casey, Casey catch up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to do one after Molokai to Wahoo. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, I'm shooting off after, but we'll, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll do a Zoom Classic. or something. It'll be fu- you know what? It's gonna be really fun. The closing thought is just the debrief on what what transpires. Oh. Where people land, the crazy stories that happen. Yeah. Does someone break a foil? Oh, yeah, man. we'll see. It's uh, the possibilities are in us. I, I still think it's anyone's race. That you know, the three young kids that beat us, mm-hmm. us old dads. You know, we got we got to split our time now. We don't have all the time in the world to train. But uh, I think there could be another five or six people that. Um, I think for sure, no matter what, anyone in the top five, whoever gets to China Walls in the top five, could easily win. Mm. Like I've one, I've a hundred percent. Just in what I've experienced, what I've seen. I think even someone 15th could maybe win. Mm -hmm. Because the time between everyone is... Two minutes is a long distance, Mm -hmm. but it's only two minutes. Mm -hmm. Because you can, you can like, make up... Like, two two minutes is, like, long miles, but you can make that distance up for someone paddling five miles an hour. Yeah. And you're traveling at 20 miles an hour. Yep. It's... We'll see. Anyone's... Stay tuned. (laughs) Stay tuned. (laughs)